Boom. What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Joannis or Joe Hatagua. I'm a Sierra Leonean American living here in West Africa. And actually I'm in Sierra Leone at the moment. And if you're interested at all in Sierra Leonean history, then this is the video for you. Okay, so today I am going to be meeting up with the African American Association here in Sierra Leone to go to Bunce Island. We're actually going to be seeing one of the major slave castles here. We'll do a tour and then we'll have lunch at nearby Tassel Island and then that'll be the end of the tour. But I'm really looking forward to it. I'm about to learn a lot. I don't really know anything about the Sierra Leonean slave castles, so this is all going to be new to me. So check it out. So we just made it to the Seabird Express, as you can see behind me. We're about to get on the boat and head out. So, see you there. What's up guys, we're on the way now, we're on the boat. At the confluence of the Roquel River, which is in Sierra Leone, and the Port Loco Creek in Sierra Leone, there's a little tiny island that measures about 1,600 feet in length and varies in width from 160 feet to 360 feet. It's called Bunce Island. This tiny island has gone by many names. Bence Island, Bence Island, George Island, Bance Island, However, what makes it so important is its role in the British transatlantic slave trade. For about 140 years, from 1668 to 1807, British slave traders operated from there and shipped tens of thousands of enslaved Africans to the Americas, primarily to the West Indies and North America. Historically, Sierra Leone is the only place in Africa that was central to the transatlantic slave trade and where the first freed African enslaved Africans from America returned to, in effect, completing the circle. It is the only place in the world that has an existing slave fort that was built by freed slaves and is the only place in the world where concurrent with creating a haven for free slaves was also actively trading and trafficking slaves prior to it. Finally, it's the only place in Africa that has as its citizens, not just indigenous locals, but Africans from the entire slave trading coast, Nova Scotians, Maroons, and liberated Africans. This tapestry is the fabric that makes Sierra Leone unique. So finally, Bunce Island is not nearly about the history of slavery between Sierra Leone and North America, but it is indeed about the despicable history of the slave trade. It all started with this tiny island that had the mishap or fortune of being so strategically located in this vast ocean of the transatlantic slave trade that has forever impacted the history of both the old and the new world. Um, the free African workers, 
who worked on Bones Island. Um, the last set of them worked under the leadership of uh, Chief Cole Adam. Um, and when um, um, the slavery was abolished and Bones Island abandoned, and then um, the traders tried to convert it to several other uses, none of which were successful. The Free Africa workers actually rioted, and by then the colony of Frita was in existence, and the governor had to send a contingent of policemen to quell the revolt. And the Free Africa workers here were asked to leave, and they all moved to a place called Medina under the leadership of Adam. So Adam became the first chief, um, the first um, chief or whatever, because before Adam there were kings. We did not have chiefs, okay? They were kings. So um, the people settled under the leadership of Adam. He became known as by Adam, and his descendants successfully lobbied for the Kamasondo section to be turned into a chiefdom, basing their rationale on the fact that Adam was the first Raman chief. So you see, um, um, Bones Island and the slave trade have significance even for more than this year, and the legacy are still alive and still relevant, okay? So that was built on Tasso Island. I was born there by Admiral de Reuter. Have you all heard of the de Reuter stone yes. at King Jimmy? Yes. That Admiral de Reuter was who bounced down the first um, um, fort in 1664 mm. on, on Tasso Island after he blown that free town and came off river and destroyed both of them. Like, like, before you continue, mm -hmm. just housekeeping, we, don't, we, don't, we, we carry all our trash. Yeah, no, no, actually, the oh, guys will, will gather them, just dump them. They have a uh, trash bag, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. but don't, you know, just put it where you can get it because we don't want to confuse future archaeologists. Yeah. We don't want them coming like 400 years down the line and finding Sierra bottle water and then thinking that the slave traders actually drank Sierra bottle water. <laughs> so we, we, are, we, we gather our trash and the guys take them to Tasso when they leave. We don't dump trash here. <laughs> this surrounding settlement, we have descendants of captives who actually work here. So there is strong historical and cultural ties between Bones and these, these surrounding communities. In fact, that was one of the things we mentioned that there was extensive vandalism and theft and whatever for Bones Island that was mostly perpetrated by the surrounding communities. So this wall, this is what was called the South Bastion. There's the North Bastion over there. the material was used to build this even though this walkway is built recently yeah, yeah, yeah. it's used from bricks that came from the wall that collapsed <laughs> 